a video um, with my name is Satyan Singh and today I'll be talking about retrieving the Green's function in the presence of the free circuit. Now, from what Filippo has just talked about, he retrieves his Green's function and, and this includes primaries and internal multiple, multiples. So basically, his virtual source focuses primaries and internal multiples. In my case, my virtual source, or virtual source, focuses primaries, internal multiples, as well as the free surface multiples. And we can use the resulting Green's function, similar to what Filippo has done, to, to do imaging. So, motivating this research is, in the literature there's a lot of work done on trying to use multiples in imaging, for instance, Gerard Huster, Pashur, and Liu, have all tried to use multiples in imaging. I'll show one example. And this is a paper that's reverse time migration using multiples from Liu. And it's a conventional, they use conventional RTM, and all the free surface multiples are removed for this image. And if you were to just focus on the, the red circle, you see that there's poor illumination, so this takes B data by the way, there's poor illumination below the salt. Now, he, he, he also tried using conventional RTM where there are free surface multiples in the data. So no, the free surface multiples are not removed basically. And you can see we, we, we don't really get much from the data. There's still poor illumination below the salt. And now there are more there are artifacts in our data. And this is conventional RTM. And if you do step back one, this is with just the primaries. And this are with, this are the primaries and, and the multiple. You can see the RTM image with just the primaries probably gives up a better image than with using these free surface multiples because now they are artifacts. Leo, however, he modified the RTM approach where when you migrate the free surface multiples, they occur at the correct depth level. And you can see, for instance, in the red circle, there's increased illumination below the salt. Now, even in Filippo's presentation, you all have seen that he has used the, in the internal multiples to increase the, to, to better imaging compared to his one-way one -way wave field imaging method from the previous presentation. And, and this, this is the stuff that has really motivated us to try and retrieve the Green's function in the presence of the free surface. So, we start with the summary. As my title suggests, we retrieve the Green's function in the presence of the free surface. And similarly, we can decompose this Green's function into an, a downgoing Green's function from the diagram, G plus, and an upgoing Green's function, G minus. And, and this is for single-sided illumination. Basically, we have the source and receivers at the surface. Now, an important note here is when you see this coconut tree, it means there's a free surface involved. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll be making a lot of reference to Filippo because it's very closely related. And similar to Filippo's stuff, the requirements are the is the reflection response one. We need reflection response, as well as an estimate of the direct arrivals from the virtual source. And for this, we need at least a macro model to, to get these travel times for the virtual source. So the algorithm will know where to focus in, in our model. Now, where we at currently, this is just a summary of what where we, we are at, is if you were to follow the, the red arrow, this is Filippo's <coughs> So first we have the full R with all the free surface multiples. Then we do SRME, surface related multiple elimination. And we get R0. Now this subscript 0, every, everywhere you see a subscript 0, that means the, the, there are no free surface multiples. So in Filippo's algorithm, following the red arrow again, we go from R to R0. And then we go on the dotted arrow, meaning there's an iterative scheme to, to get G0. So again. G0 doesn't consider the free surface. Now, 
we can apply an expression from, from the reciprocity theorem from one of Papa paper in 2004 to go from G0 to G using this simple expression and just in this case it's 1D, but it can be applied to 2D and 3D as well. But to, to, to get the full G from G0, we have a very convoluted process. We need to do SRME and then apply Filippo's scheme to get G0, and then from G0, we need to we go to G. <coughs> but we can we could not do that, we can go straight from R to G. And this process, this 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 is coined by, by I think by rule. Holy Grail. <laughs> okay, no, the Holy Grail, we it's we don't have to do SRE. We go from the full R with all the free surface multiples to G. And this will be the focus of my talk. I'll just be talking from R, going from R to G. No SRME needed. And I'll also be comparing Filippo's work as well. So I'll start with just the intuition on why. Filippo's algorithm does not account for the presence of the free surface, basically, when we have free surface multiples in our data. So suppose we wanted to focus our wave field, basically we want to get a virtual source at the green dot, which is called B. Now, we have, from last year's project review meeting, you have seen that this in getting trying to get this virtual source, we also encounter some some ghost virtual sources, which is in the red dots. And how do we get just intuitively? How do we get this ghost virtual source? It's from the reflections for this simple model from the reflections from the interface. So we, we try to focus our wave field at B, but some of the energy is also reflected back upwards that focuses at A. And our main goal was initially to get a focus at B. <coughs> so now, if, if you were, you're aware, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but in Filippo's algorithm, he decomposes at the, the surface these upgoing and downgoing fields. This is, for instance, uh, the upgoing field. And you can see, uh, we have the virtual source, the field uh, recorded at the surface, but we also have the ghost virtual source. Now what we do, it's like injecting a wave field that exactly cancels the event created by the ghost virtual source. So now we only have our focus at the desired virtual source, which is at B. Now, in the case of <coughs> in the case of a free surface, we'll just be cooking a tree again, you have multiple reflections from this ghost virtual source. So now we need to account for these multiple reflections. Reflections. We need to remove these multiple reflections, basically, from the ghost virtual source, so we can only get the response from our desired virtual source, which is at the green dot B. <coughs> now, the, the the concept is very similar to Filippo, but now we just add this virtual source. So the the mathematics is is very close to Filippo's algorithm. And you, you can get the details of the mathematical proof of Filippo's algorithm in, in case physics review letter and physics review letter in 2003, the 3D match angle equation. Now I'll, in, in, this, in, the com in the next section I'll just discuss just the concept of how, how we, we adapt Filippo's algorithm to, for the presence of the free surface. So I'll first start with the focusing solution. So this is just a solution. So if you look, it's in a reference medium. Above the top level is homogeneous. Below the bottom top level it's reflection free homogeneous. And up, the, the focusing solution is just basically upgoing, for this case, upgoing and downgoing waves at the bottom depth level, then focus at the top depth level. Similarly, we could have another solution. We could have a focus at the bottom depth level. So we have our focusing solution would be wave fields of going and up, down going at the top depth level that focus at the bottom depth level as a delta function, focuses at a delta function. And this is in our reference medium. Now, in Filippo's case, the actual model is shown here. 
So on the top depth level is homogeneous. It's, it's a homogeneous half space above the top depth level. So there's no, basically no free surface. Now on the bottom depth level, we actually get reflections. And in this case, we have this downgoing field, this downgoing field from the source, this delta function. We get a downgoing Green's function, G plus, and an upgoing Green's function, G minus. And notice the subscript zero. So again, G zero would mean there's no free surface multiples in, in, in these Green's function. And on the top depth level, our Green's function will just be our reflection response. And again, I call this R zero because there are no free surface multiples. In my case, things are very different. Well, probably not very different, but a little bit different. So there's, there's again, we have the same downgoing source, this delta function. We have our downgoing Green's function and upgoing Green's function. In this case, it's G plus and G minus, not G zero plus and G zero minus. So we have the Green's function at the bottom depth level, which includes the free surface multiples. Similarly, we have all our waves that are going up, that uh, are going at the top depth level, will be reflected from the free surface. And they'll be repeatedly bumped, like some normal free surface multiple stuff. So there's bounces from the free surface back into the medium. So exactly what's, this, what's the major difference with Filippo's algorithm and, and, and our proposed new algorithm? It's basically this downgoing field, that, the delta function. And I, by the way, I feel to mention, I probably got a little excited, but we, we use the reciprocity term to relate this focusing solution to, to the actual medium. So in, in Filippo's case, he uses reciprocity term of, to find relationships between this focusing solution and our Green's functions. Okay? And similarly, I'll, I'll use reciprocity term, both convolution type and correlation type, to find relationships between these fundamentals, these focusing solutions, to get our, our desired Green's function. Now, going in the wrong direction. Okay. So now, the major difference between Filippo's algorithm and mine is, is, this, is this actually this downgoing field. So in Filippo's case, we have this delta function. Now in our case, this, the, new, the new algorithm, we have the delta function going downwards, but we have an additional downgoing field in our, to, to add in our reciprocity terms. We have this small r by big R, and small r is just the reflection coefficient at the free surface. So the, the only, really the only, uh, the only difference between Filippo's scheme and my scheme, or our scheme, is the addition of this, this term here, r, small r by big R. So in, his iter in, in, in our iterative scheme, we just need to account for this reflection on the free surface. So <clears throat> let me just go over that briefly, just come in a nutshell. Again, we need the reflection response, the full R, with all the free surface multiples, no SRME is required. Again, we need an estimate of the direct arrival, similar to in Filippo's case. And all we need to do is just account for this additional term, this additional reflection from the free surface. So we have a, basically in our iterative scheme, we have an additional integral to solve for. An additional integral in the iterative scheme. And then we can retrieve this Green's function. So now our virtual source, again, will focus free surface multiples, as well as the primaries and internal multiples. Now, this work has just come about like probably a month, a month and a half ago. So I haven't fully got like 2D examples, but this stuff is actually extendable in 2 and 3D. I'll just show some 1D examples for now. I haven't done any imaging yet, but hopefully next CWP sponsors meeting, you all get to see that. So we start with some of the numerical examples. So I start with this velocity model, and I, I want to get my virtual source at the red dot. So basically, my Green's function will be an impulse response. Uh, uh, inject an impulse at the red dot, and what we record at the, the free surface. And it's a nine-layer model. 
each layer increases by 500, 500 meters per second. And my virtual source is located in the middle of the last layer, in eighth layer, the ninth layer, sorry. So this is the retrieved Green's function in green. And this is the model of Green's function. It's modeled from finite differences. And you can see the retrieved Green's function from our iterative procedure is, is exactly the same as the model Green's function. In case you have doubts, in case you have doubts, and then the differences, and you can see it's basically almost zero. There's some, some little notches there where that's in my code, in my one decode, I had some numerical exclusion, so that could be due to the, these notches there. Now, in case you are, in this, this slide is probably the most important slide. So I, this is the slide that, if you have to pay attention to, for any part of my presentation, it'll be this slide. Okay, so let me go from the start, from the top. Again, G0 means that there are no free surface multiples, so G0, includes just the primaries and internal multiples. So in blue, I did the difference between G minus G0. So in that case, the blue should just be the, the, the contributions from the free surface. In red, we have G0. And you could see that there's a huge difference in energy between the, the, the contributions from the free surface and well, the multiples and the primaries. My next example, you'll see this even, it'll be even more obvious. So in this case, I try to get the virtual source in the third layer, okay? And this is, again, this is my retrieved reads function. And this again is big style, pay attention. The same thing, it's G minus G zero. So that, that means in blue, we have just the contributions from the free surface. And G0 are just the, the contributions from the primaries and internal multiples. And you can still see in this case, in this just one day example, that the contributions from the free surface has so much more energy than just these internal multiples and, and primaries. So <clears throat> you, uh, just looking ahead, trying to do imaging with, with this screen's function, would should be able to add more information than what is conventionally applied to the like in like Filippo's case. So again, let me just summarize, same side that I started with. We, we construct the Green's function in the presence of the free surface. We use the full R, no SRME is required. It's a single-sided illumination. And maybe I can use the same the same procedure as Filippo in this imaging. I can decompose my Greens function into an upgoing Greens function, G minus, and a downgoing Greens function, G plus, and use this for imaging. Um, as well, this, this, although I showed one day examples, this is fully, this can be fully extended into two and three dimensions. I'd like to acknowledge Filippo and Avert as well for their, their insights. And I have to make a special mention to Filippo because and Ruth, they have started this, this stuff. And my, my stuff was actually built on, on Filippo's PhD thesis. So I, I have to thank him a lot for actually pioneering this. And he has opened a lot of windows for us, for a lot of opportunities to, for development in, in geophysics. So thanks. I'd like to entertain any questions.